Hey, what is going down? Am I on the air universe? Before we get started, I just want to let you know that today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast, providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. Apply today and become a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. And be sure to add, am I on the air in that section where it asks you, how'd you hear about Podgo? You heard it right here. Am I on the air? So make sure you fill that out in the application. Thanks everyone. And enjoy the show. Hi, am I on the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? John, I got you. John, I Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? You put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, this a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's tag grounded, I don't trust these feelings Spread a crush your nose, and I'm on your air High as next on the cloud Am I in the air, Sunday night's prime time I flex my bed of Ultron, transform to DX Don Mega and off-scene, you probably think I'm nice Cause I flow like a stream to your wireless device And the smoke full of steam on any given night, I'll show up like a piece of any given slice. And for the latest and what is best about I, tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. Well, what is going down, everybody? Welcome back to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega. I am your host, and I'm so happy to be here with you guys to bring you the latest and the greatest in entertainment news, television, movies, reviews. You come right here to Am I on the Air? Once again, my name is Don Mega. I'm your host. We are broadcasting live from the Phoenix Red Dragons Radio Studios. Yes, I'm on the road again. I am broadcasting live from my hotel room. Yes, because I got to make sure I get this show done and out for my peeps, regardless of the situation. So I'm broadcasting up here in Phoenix, Arizona, doing a little work out of town tonight. So what better time than to bring you this show? It's season 23, episode 4, and tonight's show is titled Let the Spice Flow, or I should say, the spice must flow. Either way, the spice, it's all about the spice. Um, Because, of course, tonight's non-spoiler review is going to be Dune, the number one movie in the world. Um, So we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about a couple TV shows. And then we're going to get into our news of the week. So, without any further ado, I do really want a quick uh, shout out the brand new Am I on the Air Quick Bite episode that we just dropped. Um, I did the early social media reactions for Marvel's new movie Eternals. That's right, Eternals comes out next Friday on November 5th, and it has already screened for critics. And the early social media reactions have dropped, and I put them together into a nice Quick Bite episode and got that out for you guys. So make sure you go on over to Am I on the Air Quick Bites, subscribe to the podcast feed, and then check out that new episode if you haven't listened to it already. All right. And I do, once again, want to shout out my boy Peeps, his show, The People's Forum. I shouted this out last week, but just to let you all know again, last week I was a special guest on his show. We, we um, reviewed the What If Marvel series from Disney+, Plus. so we counted down our favorite episodes, and it was an awesome, awesome show. So check that out over on RedDragonsRadio.com over at The People's Forum, okay? All right, plugs out the way. Let's get into it. Let's talk some Dune, right? Number one movie in the world. Um, you know, it also debuted in theaters and on HBO Max uh, this past weekend. And let's break this thing down. Paul Atreides is a brilliant and gifted young man born to into a great destiny beyond his understanding. He must travel to the most dangerous planet in the universe to ensure the future of his family and his people. As forces explode into conflict over the planet's exclusive supply of the most precious resource in existence, a commodity capable of unlocking 
humanity's greatest potential only to those who can conquer their fear will survive now this is a star star studded movie guys you got timothy chalamet rebecca ferguson oscar isaac zendaya jason momoa stellan skarsgård josh brolin javier bardem i mean it goes on and on de batista's in this thing it is one of the most stacked cast we've ever seen in a movie um, of course, this movie's been done before. It's been, it's had sequels. It's had TV shows on sci-fi. We had the David Lynch movie from way back in the day that had Sting in it. Um, and you know, I always found it to be a very weird franchise. But from the very start, when we started reporting, you know, what a year or two ago, that Denny Villeneuve was going to be directing, and he started putting together this cast, I was like. I was feeling real good about it. And then the first trailer came out and I felt real good about it. And then the second trailer came out and I said, ooh, I'm feeling real good about it. So when the movie came out this past Friday, we went to IMAX and we checked it out and I was underwhelmed. Yep, I was very underwhelmed. I did not like it very much. (laughs) And I know, I'm going to state for the record right now, I know I'm probably going to be in the minority here. This movie is getting rave reviews from most people. I have several friends that absolutely love this thing. I saw the movie with my boy Geeky Pat, and Geeky Pat loved it, loved it. But he's a big fan of the source material, big fan of the books and of the other movies, and he absolutely loved this. I have another friend who literally just texted me right before I started recording, and he said, I totally get where you're coming from. Um, But as a big sci-fi fan, I loved it, and it's one of my top five sci-fi movies of all time. And I was like, holy crap. I mean, it's crazy the amount of love that the people that like it are loving it and saying, you know, best movie of the year, you know, one of the best sci-fi movies ever. And I don't know what I missed, guys. I don't know what I missed because to me, this movie was boring with a capital G. Um, super boring. All the action scenes are pretty much in the trailer. Other than that, it's a lot of talking. It's a lot of slowness. It's just a lot of, um, it just didn't do it for me. And that's not, I don't want to knock it like, and I'm not knocking it by any sort of means because I want the movie to be successful. If a sequel gets made, I will be there in the theaters again in IMAX to watch this movie, uh, and see how the sequel pans out. Um, I just, it just did not click for me on that opening night. Now I did want to be totally honest and open and just say that, you know, when I saw it Friday night, I saw it at the very last showing of the night. It didn't start till about 1030 at night. It is almost a three hour movie. So that was really rough too. I've been exhausted because I started a new job and I've been doing stuff with my daughter and my brother-in-law was getting married and we were doing some stuff with him and the family. And it was just a busy, busy week. And I really shouldn't have even tried to slide in a movie, (laughs) but I did because I really wanted to see it. And I didn't want to watch it on HBO Max. I know a lot of people are just watching it at home, and I didn't. I wanted to go to the theater. I wanted to support it. I wanted to see it in IMAX, and I did. And I... I don't know if this is... If my review is coming from a sense of I just was tired and I just maybe didn't want to fully be there. Um, I, this movie didn't get out to about one fifteen in the morning, <laughs> you know, and you know, it was hard to keep my eyes open. It was hard to stay awake. It was hard to stay invest- invested. Um, I felt my eyes getting heavy multiple times throughout it. Um, and, and you know, and, and it just, I just found it so boring that it was hard to keep me engaged. Um, So I will say that in reflection of how much everybody else is liking it, uh, I had, you know, I had a couple people tell me I should watch it again before I review it. And I didn't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to wait to watch it again because I don't know when I'm going to have another three hours to watch this thing. Um, But I do want to watch it again and I will watch it again on HBO Max and see how I feel. I will watch it with some fresh eyes. I'll watch it in a different environment watch it not half asleep and see how I feel. See if I still feel the same or if I feel differently and I have to come back, 
you know, next week and be like, oh my God, it was five stars. I don't know what I was thinking when I saw it the first time. So I will have a part two review on a future episode of Am I on the Air? But for right now, I would only give Dune two out of five stars. I thought it was just okay. I didn't hate it by any means, um, but I didn't love it. I didn't think it was that great. I, what I will say is it's beautifully directed. It's beautifully acted. Everybody's awesome in it. It looks amazing. The effects are great. The sound is great. I mean, it has every element going for it other than the fact that it was boring. And I know, and I've had several people reach out to me too and say, I agree with your review. You know, I put up my video review of this over the weekend on TikTok and Instagram, and I had several people private message me and say, I totally agree with you. So I'm not alone, even though I feel like I'm the minority sometimes with this movie, but a lot of my friends are sci-fi geeks, so they all just seem to love it. But, you know, when I do look at the reviews... For every five that love it, there's another two that say they absolutely hated it and thought it was boring. So, you know, I guess I'm not far off. It just depends on depends on what side of the fence you fall on. Uh, I think if you're a fan of the source material, if you're a fan of the books and the movies, um, I think you're going to absolutely love this. If you're not and you don't like any of that stuff and you're not really big into sci-fi, I think the movie's confusing. I don't think it's going to hold your interest. And you're going to want to shut it off. You're going to want to walk out um, or just fall asleep. So it really just depends, again, what side of the fence you fall on. So like I said, what what I will give it is I will watch it again on HBO Max before it leaves the streaming service. And um, I'll let you guys know how I feel on the second go-round. But from my first theater experience, it just wasn't for me, guys. So two out of five on Dune. Okay, switching on over to television. Another one that everybody's been like, you got to watch, you got to watch, you got to watch. And I keep talking about on here, but then I never get to it, um, is Squid Game. Uh, you know, everybody, of course, talking about how it's it's the biggest thing in the world and everybody loves Squid Game. And this is, this is the hotness, right? This is the hotness TV show that everybody loves and everybody wants more of. So finally last week I said, okay, I got to see Squid Game. I got to see what all the hype is about. I got to get into this thing. I got to see what's up. And I watched the first episode and meh, (laughs) it didn't do anything for me either. I don't know what everybody's tripping out about now. You know, it it was a setup. Um, What was very hard for me with this show and I knew it would be because I don't like foreign shows. I don't like subtitles. I don't like dub. So I knew it was going to be difficult for me to get into this show where A, I either have to listen to it in an American dub and then it looks stupid as hell because the words don't match the lips and the voices are annoying or I put on the original audio with subtitles and then I have to sit and read everything and I just find subtitles to be super distracting when I'm trying to watch a show or a movie. So I'm struggling already with this show out the gate. And, you know, just to tell you, I mean, I only watched the first episode. Like, I had no interest the rest of the week to go back and watch any more of it. You know, I have a really good friend that was like, oh, yeah, you you started it. I'm so excited. What episode did you get to? And I'm like, I only watched the first one, and I could care less about going back for more. Uh, not to say that I won't. I will continue it. I heard the first couple episodes are the worst to get through, and then the rest of it's awesome. So, I will truck along and we'll see where it takes us. So my squid game has just begun. Uh, Really quickly, that's all the new stuff I got was Dune and Squid Game. I do want to quickly shout out the newest episode of SNL, Saturday Night Live. This past weekend had Jason Sudeikis on as the host, and he was amazing. I thought it was the best episode they've done in a long time. Every sketch was great. It was super funny. Jason is amazing. It was so good to have him back on the show. So I really want to shout that out because I know a lot of people don't watch SNL regularly, so I really wanted to let you know that this was an episode to check out if you can. It's on Hulu, it's on Peacock. Go check out the latest episode of SNL. And lastly, the uh, the newest episode of Titans just dropped, and that was the Season 3 finale. So Season 3 has wrapped. We talked about on last week's show that it's been renewed for Season 4 already, which I'm super stoked about. Um, but hey, great finale, great wrap-up, and a really great season for Titans, man. Really finding its stride this year. So can't wait to see where it takes us on Season 4. So check that out. If you've been waiting to binge it, now's your time. Check it out in its entirety, Titans Season 3 on HBO Max. So that's 
our reviews, guys. You got Dune, which is now in theaters and on HBO Max. Uh, two out of five stars for me on the first viewing. I'll let you know where it goes from there. And then Squid Game over on Netflix. SNL, uh, check out the Jason Sudeikis episode on Peacock and Hulu. And, of course, Titans Season 3 on HBO Max. Now let's get into our box office and talk top ten. Coming in number ten, it's the Met Opera Fire Shut Up In My Bones Number 9 is The French Dispatch This was a new one that came out That a lot of people were excited about Came in at number 9 Number 8 was Shang-Chi Number 7 was The Last Duel Number 6 was Adam's Family 2 Number 5 is a movie I really wanted to go see over the weekend But once again we had so much stuff going on with family That we didn't get to it But it's the new family film Ron's Gone Wrong um, With the little robot And my daughter is dying to see this movie I felt so bad that we didn't have time this weekend to go see it Uh, But we'll definitely check it out this weekend And I'll review it on the next episode Coming in number 4 it's Venom Let There Be Carnage Number 3 is No Time to Die Number 2 is Halloween Kills And number 1 is Dune With 40.1 million dollars And with that being said It's time to switch gears And get over Into our news of the week Alrighty y'all So you know when Eternals was doing It's um, premiere They got to talk to Kevin Feige on the red carpet And they were asking him about that Venom Post credit scene And he was talking about how it took a lot Of coordination to get that Scene done between Marvel and Sony So you could just imagine I don't want to talk about it in detail because of course It's still kind of a spoiler uh, For those of you that haven't seen Venom 2 yet So, um, But yeah very interesting uh, Read with Kevin Feige talking about Trying to put that together Together. Colin Woodell has joined Stars' new upcoming John Wick series, The Continental. So he's been added to the cast. We talked about last week's episode that um, Mel Gibson has taken on the lead of that, so pretty cool. Meryl Streep, Kit Harrington, and more have joined Apple TV Plus' new Climate Change Anthology series. The Flash has dropped its first trailer for season five. Um, Sorry, season 8, but it's going to be a five-part crossover event called Armageddon And they're bringing back a lot of people for this, man you got uh, Green Arrow's daughter, Felicity Smoke coming back You've got um, the Atom coming back You've got Black Lightning coming back So it's going to be a really cool crossover Batwoman's involved So uh, the Flash Armageddon uh, debuting in November for its five-part crossover event Kicking off season 8, so check out that first trailer there um, James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 has officially begun production That's super exciting, man I love to hear when a movie is finally filming It's finally real Ozark, we've been waiting for Ozark forever And now we know that Ozark Season 4 Part 1 Because of course they broke this last season up into two parts Netflix has confirmed that January, baby January 21st We can see the debut of uh, Season 4, Part 1 of Ozark I'm very excited about that The Munsters, Rob Zombie has revealed the first look at his uh, cast for The Munsters So check that out if you're interested To All the Boys I've Loved Before is getting its own TV spinoff greenlit over on Netflix It's called XO Kitty Uh, Elle Fanning becomes the mother of Russia in The Great uh, Season 2 And you can check out the first trailer for that We also have the first teaser trailer for Being the Ricardos So you get the first look at Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball Of course Nicole Kidman uh, And um, this is a new Aaron Sorkin movie And it's coming to um, Amazon Prime Video So check out the first teaser trailer for that Indiana Jones 5 We have some set photos featuring Phoebe Waller-Bridge And Harrison Ford on set of the new movie Cowboy Bebop We have a new teaser featuring John Cho's Spike Spiegel In action Uh, Guys I can't Um, Tell you how excited I am getting for Cowboy Bebop I never followed this franchise I never watched the anime But the more and more I see of this live action version The more and more stoked I am They put out this little teaser That looked incredible Like it was right out the pages of the anime And I was blown away I'm so excited for this show I think it's going to be something really really unique and special I'm so stoked Quinn Tarantino talking about Kill Bill 3 and wanting to make a comedy western So you can check check out that article on our social media for some more info Um, James Gunn talks about the Suicide Squad alternate ending 
that was too dark even for him. So you can check that out if you're interested. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody that hasn't seen Suicide Squad yet. Uh, Call Me Cat Season 2 um, and the new comedy Pivoting, along with Gordon Ramsay's Next Level Chef, have all been given January premiere dates over on Fox. Riverdale Season 6 trailer teases the spooky Riverdale event and Sabrina's arrival. That's right. And a possessed Betty, by the way? Maybe. So get ready for the Season 6 kickoff of Riverdale. The CW acquires the Italian Da Vinci drama called Leonardo, which stars Freddie Highmore, and Australian teen pregnancy comedy called Bump. So those will be coming to the CW. Um, Resident, the, sh- the show The Resident has added Gotham actress Kaylee Ronane um, as a badass ER doc. So there you go. Uh, a Million Little Things, um, Ryan Hansen, Aziz Tisfai, and Mario Van Peebles are all set to guest star in the upcoming season four. Ghost, which is a really funny show, one of the best new comedies on TV that I've checked out. Uh, Ghost has just added Matt Walsh to play Hetty's robber baron husband, so that'll be perfect. Super excited about that. Uh, Netflix has added 4.4 million subscribers in the third quarter, surprising and surpassing all projections. So very cool there. Pablo Schreiber has joined Hulu's new show, Candy, which is going to be an upcoming limited series. Moving along. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I already some of these notes here. Brian D'Arcy James and Mackenzie Aston have joined the cast of HBO's Love and Death. Um, Hulu's new sci-fi thriller Mother Android is coming soon. We have your first look images of that. It's going to be coming to Hulu exclusively. Uh, We have everything coming and going to all your favorite streaming services in November. So check that out if you're interested. Um, big, big, crazy Batwoman news, man. Ruby Rose came out a couple days ago and she blasted the CW. She blasted the Batwoman show. She said, this is why I quit the show. Um, it was unsafe work conditions, toxic behavior, all kinds of craziness that went down on the set of Batwoman. Well, that pissed off everybody that works on that show. And now everybody is fighting back on Ruby Rose, saying she's lying, saying that there's no truth to her stuff. Every actor is coming out saying that she was the problem. CW came out and said, you know what? She was fired, and we tried to play nice and say that she was leaving the show to be cordial. But since she wants to throw everybody under the bus, then F her. We come in for that ass. <laughs> so... You're going to have to check out all these articles that I posted. I've tried to keep everything posted that talks about this story from both sides so you can make up your own mind on who's right or who's wrong. But this was craziness that blew up between Ruby Rose and the CW. So check that all out, man. It is insane. Emily Blunt is in talks to join Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer biopic. Um, Cyberpark. Cyberpunk's 2077 and Witcher 3, the current gen versions, are going to be delayed into 2022. What a pain in the ass, man. I only bought Cyberpunk 2077 to play on the PS5, but they were like, oh, it's not out yet, but don't worry, in a couple months, it'll be over a full year that that game's come out, and we still don't have the PS5 version. Now they're saying delayed into 2022. What a bummer. That really sucks. Uh, Netflix says they're going to change how it measures viewership data after the Squid Game success. Now, remember, Netflix seems to gauge viewership by if you watch the show longer than two minutes or not. That's right. You could put on a movie or a show, watch it for two minutes and shut it off, and they're going to count it as you watched it. So that's how some of these things blow the hell up when they're looking at stats. Um, And Squid Games blew the hell up. So they're like, we're going to adjust a little bit to really understand what people are watching or not. So we'll see. Um DC Fandom 2021, it sounds like 66 million people watched worldwide, so that's pretty damn awesome, man. Big hit for DC. I'm sure they're going to continue this one here. Halloween Kills made a killer debut on Peacock. That's right. Millions of people watched it on Peacock. It was a big, big success, and congratulations to them putting it on there because that's something that the streamer definitely needed. Sisters has been renewed for Season 4 over on BET. Um... 
yeah, so uh, going back to the Ruby Rose thing now, I'm, I got notes all over the place on this. So after she came out and abused and accused of everything, like I said, Warner Brothers Television came back and accused Ruby Rose of revisionist history, saying that she was fired after multiple complaints of workplace behavior. So ooh, she's trying to blame everybody else. And then mm, uh, she also threw her co-star Doug Ray Scott under the bus, which he came out and said that he absolutely refutes her um, claim saying that those are damaging claims about his onset behavior, which WB came out and backed him up and said that he's had zero complaints from anybody else and that he's been nothing but professional. So once again, crazy Dolph Lundgren, Scott Atkins and Ryan Quantin are set to face off in a new action movie called section eight. There's a big rumor going around that uh, Marvel might be doing a World War Hulk movie that will begin production in 2022. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because, like I said, it is a rumor. I'm not thinking this is going to happen, but there was a lot of sites running with this one and some credible um, people that have guessed some other really big stuff that has come to fruition uh, have stated this. So I thought it was worth discussing but also disclaiming That it is a rumor and I'm guessing probably will not happen I don't see going into a World War Hulk movie Uh, Plus we need to find out for sure first if the movie rights have gone back to Disney Because the reason why we haven't had another solo Hulk movie Is because of the distribution rights with Universal Pictures So if the rights are still Universal then this definitely ain't happened But if the rights have expired then we could be in line for another Hulk show or movie. So, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Supposedly, uh, the She-Hulk uh, TV show will set something up. But, I don't know, man. I'm Just like I said, take it with a grain of salt. That's just a rumor going around right now. Man, we had some big trailers come out in the last couple of days. Michael Bay's new movie, Ambulance, dropped its first trailer. And this movie looks fantastic. I am so here for this movie. I already love Michael Bay. And this movie has that typical Bay Glare and style and action and it looks amazing. Jake Gyllenhaal, Yaya Abdul Mateen the second. They're like um, military guys who are down on their luck and they decide to rob a bank. And of course, things go crazy. So they um, take a ambulance hostage, and this is the story about them in the ambulance trying to get away, trying to keep this money. And um, I, I think it looks really, really good, man. So I am there for this one. We also got our first trailer for Uncharted. That's Right, Uncharted, the video game adaptation movie with Tom Holland and um, uh, Mark Wahlberg in this thing. This is going to be in theaters February 18th. So, looking forward to this. This is going to be a fun kind of Indiana Jones type movie, high octane, high action. You know, can we get a really good PlayStation game uh, as a movie? We're going to find out. So, check out the Uncharted trailer. Uh, And also, we had the first official full trailer for Red Notice. This is the new movie with The Rock, Gal Gadot, and Ryan Reynolds. It looks fantastic. I love this trailer. This was a great day for trailers, man. Red Notice, Uncharted, and Ambulance all came out on the same day and killed it on the internet. So, this movie hits Netflix uh, in November. So, get ready for Red Notice. I'm super, super stoked. November 5th in select theaters and November 12th. On Netflix, I definitely want to see this in theaters if I can. But it also is the same weekend Internals comes out, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Rachel Bloom and Aline Brosh McKenna are reuniting for a new Hulu comedy that they're working on. HBO has landed the rights to the documentary on Bishop Sycamore football scandal. Um, Marianne Cotillard, Jude Law, and more have joined uh, Kate Winslet in the new Lee Miller film that they're doing. Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne have a biopic in development. Conan O'Brien hopes that there's an appetite for his upcoming HBO Max show. I'm sure there will be, man. People miss Conan. Mythic Quest has been renewed for not only one more, but two more seasons over on Apple TV+. Plus. I do love Mythic Quest. It is a funny-ass show. I keep telling people, man, who are hesitant on getting Apple TV+. Plus. It's five bucks, and there's a lot of great content on it. Mythic Quest is one. Um, Ted Lasso is one. The Morning Show. There's so many good things on Apple TV Plus, and I'm not even an Apple fan, but that's a great streaming service, and it's only four dollars and ninety nine cents. Stop hesitating, man. You can afford five bucks. So very happy for them on that. Hulu's Animaniac season two has dropped its first trailer, so you can check that out. Among Us is coming to PlayStation and Xbox, so get ready for that. 
the new teaser trailer is dropped for Women of the Movement, and it's coming to ABC. It's a new Emmett Till miniseries that they put together. King Richard has dropped its latest trailer and final trailer featuring a new track by Beyonce called Be Alive. Looking forward to King Richard, man. That one will be in theaters and on HBO Max as well. The greatest beer run ever has begun filming with Russell Crowe and Zac Efron. Um, Doctor Who has his new Halloween episode for season 13 coming soon, so get ready for the tradition to continue. Um, a Sopranos prequel series is being discussed over on HBO Max, so we'll see how that pans out if they end up green lighting that. Hocus Pocus 2 is getting ready to film, and Sam Richardson, who I absolutely love, this dude is so funny, uh, he has joined the cast of the upcoming Disney Plus sequel, so great addition. Mel Gibson is Scott Eastwood's uh, psychiatrist in a new trailer for their film Dangerous. Claire Holt is set to appear in Legacy Season 4 as Rebecca Mickelson. Batwoman's uh, Cameron Johnson weighs in on the latest Ruby Ruse. Uh, Ruby, Ruby Rose uh, Kerfuffle He says it's very hard to be fired When you're the lead But she did uh, And he calls her accusations lies straight up So again man the people there Are not agreeing with her I talked a little bit earlier about the show Ghost And how much I really liked it Well congratulations to Ghost because It's been given a full season order Over on CBS so that is awesome man. congratulations to Ghost Um Man, this was uh, some big news over the weekend and very, very sad news. There's a new Western movie being filmed called Rust. It stars Alec Baldwin. And in an unfortunate accident on set, Alec Baldwin fired a prop gun, which was supposed to have blanks in it. uh, But unfortunately, it had real ammo in the gun. And it killed the cinematographer, Helena Hutchins. Um, She died at the age of 42 after the prop gun incident on the film. Uh, The director of the film is also in critical condition after a piece of the bullet hit him as well. Um, This was really sad, man, and took me back and reminded me of The Crow. You know, The Crow is one of my favorite movies ever, but Brandon Lee died in a similar uh, event on set where he got shot by a blank and he died from it. And... You know, Alec Baldwin, man, my thoughts and prayers are not only out to, you know, Helena Hutchins, you know, family and friends and the director of the movie, uh, but it's out to Alec Baldwin as well because he's catching some grief for this and it had nothing to do with him. Everybody that has been on the set and has investigated said that Alec Baldwin did nothing wrong. He was handed the prop gun and was told everything was fine, that it was safety checked and he was good to go. But this man has to live with the fact that he killed somebody, even though it was an accident, that's going to weigh on his consciousness for the rest of his life. And I feel so bad for Alec Baldwin. Um, It's just so sad all the way around. Um, But, you know, Hollywood looking to, to make changes, to looking to make strides and have better gun safety protocols on all their sets of TV shows and movies and you know, to prevent this from happening again, you know, so super, super sad story for all of those involved. Uh, the movie production is, of course, shut down for now, um, and we'll see if it ever picks back up, to be honest. I don't know. This film might be tainted at this point. It might, might just be tossed away, um, but we'll see uh, where it goes. But thoughts and prayers are out to everybody involved in this horrible, horrible thing. Okay, moving along, um, director of the new Spider-Man movie, John Watts, says that the new Spider-Man movie is so ambitious that internally they've been calling it Spider-Man Endgame, uh, just to kind of set how big and crazy this movie is. So this just gets me even more stoked, man. If you're going to call it Spider-Man Endgame, holy crap, man, that means there's some crazy, crazy going on. We're still waiting for that confirmation that Toby and Andrew are in this thing, or who else is ever in this thing that are trying to keep secret. Uh, I can't wait for the next trailer to drop. Uh, Some people are speculating maybe uh, next week when the internals comes out. Who knows? Uh, But we're ready to see more. Uh, But, yeah, I'm so excited for Spider-Man, man. man. We will see. We'll see. 
NBC has ordered a new family comedy series from George and Mayan Lopez. So I love George Lopez, so I'll be down to check this out for sure. Congratulations to Ryan Gosling, who has joined the new Margot Robbie movie, Barbie. That's right. Remember, Margot Robbie's doing a Barbie movie directed by Greta Gerwig, and Ryan Gosling has joined the cast as, guess what? Ken, that's right, Ken and Barbie are ready to roll Uh, It's going to be awesome Big, big Star Wars news Hayden Christensen is coming back for the Ahsoka series That's right, remember he signed on to be in the Obi-Wan series And that has already finished filming with um, Ewan McGregor Can't wait to see him in that But now that we're getting ready to do Ahsoka He signed on again, so you know we'll see Uh, He's going to be reprising his role of Anakin Skywalker Is he going to be a flashback? Is he going to be a force ghost? Who knows how we're going to see Anakin But I'm excited to see Hayden return once again for Ahsoka The Black Phone's Mason Thames has joined Walker Season 2 Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie led period drama called Babylon has officially wrapped filming Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition Is uh, coming out in November And they released a new trailer for that So I'm excited, I love me some Grand Theft Auto I'll be glad to see the update that they did Super Crooks, we have the new teaser trailer for Netflix's anime uh, So check that out Based on Mark Millar's stuff It's based in that Jupiter's Legacy uh, universe But it is an animated feature Timothy Simmons is joining Jessica Biel In Hulu's true crime drama Candy um, John Cena is in talks to headline a new action comedy from the Taken director called Freelance. So that's awesome, man. Get it, Cena. Get it. Uh, the Matrix Resurrections is officially given given an R rating. That's right, from the MPAA, just like the other Matrix movies, rated R. I love it. I'm glad. I'm glad we're f- keeping it up. Transformers 7 and uh, images reveal the Gen 1 Optimus Prime And the filming has officially wrapped on Transformers Beast Wars Or Rise of the Beast or End of the Beast I forgot what the movie's officially called But uh, yeah, <laughs> I love all the, the Gen 1s that we're going to see in this movie I think it's going to be really, really cool In some more sad news, I hate reporting sad news on this show But James Michael Tyler, who played Gunther on Friends for all those years He died at the age of 59 yesterday Um, Prostate cancer, very, very sad Uh, So our thoughts and prayers go out to him I remember I watched the Friends reunion on HBO Max over the summer And he wasn't there, but he sent in a video And they were talking about how you know he had been sick And it's just really sad to hear that it actually got the best of him Kieran Culkin is set to host SNL in November So that'll be interesting Um, We have the teaser trailer for When Hope Calls Which is Lori Laughlin's return uh, For season 2 of the When the Heart Calls spinoff Peter Scolari has also passed away Man, there's too much sadness on this show right now Uh, He was from Booze and Buddies and New Heart Uh, He passed away at the age of 66 Very, very sad Peter Scolari Uh, Dune had a $40.1 million opening in the domestic box office And globally the movie has passed the $200 million mark So congratulations there Uh, The Rookie, one of the first TV shows to get some new gun set laws um, After the unfortunate Alec Baldwin event we just talked about It's now policy on The Rookie that all gunfire on set will be with airsoft guns With CG muzzle flashes added in post Showrunner Alex Howley wrote There will be no more live weapons on the show The safety of our cast and crew is too important So once again, I love that it's causing change And people are jumping on it uh, Alex Baldwin Alec Baldwin was handed a loaded weapon by an AD Who indicated that it was safe to use in the moments before he fatally shot the cinematographer That's what the court records show The AD did not know that the prop gun was loaded with live rounds Oh god, so so sad Sony Pictures has announced two more untitled Marvel movies for June and October of 2023 We don't know what they'll be, but this is from the Sony side of the Marvel Universe So we'll see what that turns into Dune Part 2 is essentially greenlit, according to the Warner Media CEO and Sarnoff uh, the, the plan is to do a sequel, 
but nothing is official yet until um, Legendary Pictures actually signs off on it. So Warner Brothers is cool with it. They're assuming it will be a part two. That's why the Dune in theaters right now starts off and says Dune Part One because they know they want to make a sequel. Denny Villeneuve know he wants to make a sequel, but it's up to Legendary Pictures and they have not given the official green lit. Uh, green light yet but they're saying It's essentially green lit so Fingers crossed if you want more I thought this was interesting news That Joss Whedon uh, wrote a version Of the Avengers with the Wasp In it as the main female character He wanted to cast Zoe Deschanel As Hope Van Dyne According to a new book that's coming out Called the story of Marvel Studios The making of the Marvel Cinematic Universe I definitely want to read this book I'm super super Stoked because uh, I love news Like this so very cool to know that Zoe Deschanel Chanel, who I really, really love, um, could have almost played Wasp. So very interesting there. Uh, let's see here. Benedict Cumberbatch confirms that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is going to have some reshoots here soon. Uh, so that will be cool. So don't freak out when you see that in the news. Amelia Clark and Chiwetel Ejiofor are set to lead a new sci-fi romance movie called The Pod Generation. Disney Plus's Percy Jackson series has just brought on James Bobbin to helm the pilot episode. We have the first teaser trailer for Dr. Brain, which is Apple TV Plus' first Korean thriller series. So everybody's getting on that Korean uh, TV show train. Uh, the Transformers movie is called Rise of the Beast. I don't know why I always forget that. I want to say Beast Wars and, and all that other good stuff. But Transformers Rise of the Beast has officially wrapped production. Uh, Netflix is looking to make a movie version of The Last Kingdom That's right, it's a show that's been on for many years Going on its final season, so they're going to make a movie Uh, So that sounds very cool there for the people that love that Um, Dave Chappelle says he's willing to meet with the trans community In wake of the closer backlash But he has some conditions So check that out if you want to know more Um, Neil Patrick Harris has a new show coming out called Uncoupled And it has just added Tuck Watkins as his ex-hubby Tisha Campbell has joined the cast along with Marsha Gay Harden So there you go there The Jonas Brothers are going to be getting a roast that will be on Netflix So get ready for that The new season of Love Life is coming And the cast and creators tease a season 2 That's a completely different story And a completely different perspective So I love when shows mix it up like that That's very very cool Congratulations to Brendan Fraser Who was announced today to be playing the villain Firefly In the upcoming HBO Max Batgirl movie Starring Leslie Grace So I love that we're starting to get news on Batgirl And hey Brendan Fraser man Awesome awesome Gonna be good to see him playing the villain David E. Kelly has landed a new mystery drama over on Peacock We don't know much else other than that Um, Let's see here And that is, yep, that's it That is our news, man If you, Like I said, if you want to know more Or you want to dig into any more of the articles that we've talked about You just need to go to our Twitter or our Facebook page And you can get the rest for you I just don't want to spoil anything I also don't want to take up a bunch of time Getting into the nitty gritty of a bunch of this stuff But if you want to know more like the, the Ruby Rose craziness Or more about the, the unfortunate rust accident with Alec Baldwin We have so many articles up on our Twitter and our Facebook page, so definitely check that out. Um, But that'll do it for me, man. We're going to wrap this baby up here at the 40-minute mark, so we had great timing here tonight. Not not a lot to review in the beginning, and I think that saved us a couple minutes, so... Um, But yes, let's do some shout outs, man Amiontheair.com is our official webpage Make sure you bookmark that And listen to the show and links Everything's there on the website Follow us on Twitter at Amiontheair You can follow me on Twitter at DXDonMega Like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Amiontheair Don't forget to subscribe to us On TikTok and Instagram And YouTube, just search Amiontheair And give us a follow, please Subscribe to our podcast feed on Apple Podcast. If Apple Podcast ain't your thing, we're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Pandora, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, Podchaser. We're all over the web, man. Just search Am I on the Air, Google Podcast. I mean, anything you probably listen to us on, we'll be there. So just search us and subscribe Um, And shout out to RedDragonsRadio.com Thanks for always streaming us on demand You can listen to this show You can listen to Am I Still on the Air You can listen to the Am I on the Air Quick Bites All of it 
is on Red Dragons Radio. So shout out, plug, plug. Follow on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio. That'll do it for me here tonight on this Monday, October the 25th. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, y'all, peace. Bye, everybody. Red Dragons! Red Dragons!